Hey everyone, it's Penmark, and welcome to another drawing session on the same commission that I've been working on from before. I hope you all have had a good year so far. Mine was kind of weird. I had to uh, make that vlog you guys saw, and the, f the uh, app I was using to edit it crashed and, was, and kept messing up every time I tried to use it. And I've used that one in the past and it was fine, but yeah, for... Uh, for just yesterday, it decided to mess up on the audio, and from then on just wouldn't work. So, yeah, it was kind of a panic, and, and like during that panic, my sister then busted the room going like, Oh, hey, Richard! Happy New Year! And I was, I was in like a funk, and I had to get myself cheered up again like, Okay, yeah, you're right, I should be enjoying myself. So, yeah, the beginning of the year wasn't that good, but uh, it's only been a few hours, it's only been a day, and everything's been pretty good. Um, if you hear a sound in the background, any jingling, that's my cat. He decided to uh, spend his day in my room, which is wonderful. So, without further ado, onto the picture. The tool, the trick, the tip I'm going to show you guys that I never realized. I need to angle the camera, sorry for this. But down at the bottom, at the bottom of layers, I think most versions of Photoshop and other programs have features like this. Uh, I learned this in a, a normal Photoshop tutorial, and I have a student version that's slightly different, but still the same button. Uh, you have lock buttons that can lock the lock the layer, and that's obvious in case you don't want anything to happen to that layer. You don't want to accidentally draw on it. But next to it, I always saw this and never did anything. Lock transparent pixels. I was like, what's that supposed to mean? I don't get it. It's essentially like a selection tool for everything on that layer. It selects everything on that layer and you can only draw on that layer. So like for this picture, all I have on this layer, if I get rid of everything else, this is the only thing on that layer. It is just these characters on a couch. They're floating in a checkered abyss. And now that I have that little lock for transparent layers, now, I'm going to do white so it's easy to see. Everything I do is only on these characters. Meanwhile, everything else in the background, everything else, is not touched, as you can see. Like, everything else is fine. Right now it looks like they're covered in tape or something. I don't know. But yeah, that's an amazing tool. Oh my goodness. Holy crap. It is really good. Uh... Especially if I was trying to work on more lighting here, on the edges, instead of worrying like I did before, like my whole life, trying to figure out uh, how to get you know the, the details just right within the shape I did. Now I'm working on see I'm doing a little white lines for his hair, but it'll only happen. Actually, those might be good. I'll leave those there for now. That'll only happen on what I've already drawn. So it's gonna keep the basic shape of everything I have on that layer. And that's so useful. This, side, this saves so much time. Uh, I'm still kind of training myself to use the selection tools more. But yeah, now I'm just gonna leave this on whenever I'm working on a uh, each layer, especially the characters. I probably should have had all my characters in a, uh, each of my characters to be their own layer because technically it's gonna make it a little more complicated. It's hard to train myself on that because I'm usually wanting to just jump to the details. Uh, to me, that's how I think I'm saving time. But I know I'm also wasting time by trying to be so perfectly accurate on that. Um, so, yeah. uh, I had oh, I had one uh, a friend in the uh, comment section, Soko. I've known him from uh, DeviantArt and Twitter. He asked me about uh, with layer types uh, masking and uh, clipping layers and stuff like that. I, uh, I've i shown once before in one of my early episodes of uh, adjustment layers and use and uh, also like darken, multiply, and some of those layers, those layer types that edit what's underneath them. That's useful, and that's usually... Ooh, I clipped something. That's the only type of uh, clipping layers I usually use. They're handy, they are useful, because you can add a, uh, you can basically do what I'm doing right now with the uh, lock tool to only draw in certain places like that. 
and it doesn't interfere with outside the lines. Clipping layers can do that too, but you have to keep track of another layer over here. Uh, I'd suggest playing around with it because they, they are handy. For me personally, I only like to use them in certain times. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, continuing to add the shadows and flesh out these characters. As you can see, I'm using a purple, probably me a little bit more blue than purple, I need to fix that, to uh, blend the right color. And I'm still using my Alt key to, uh, to s every time I blend a new color, like with the fur here, I'm, sh I'm blending red into purple. Every time I like start to blend it a little bit, I then click on the color in the middle that I just created. So think of it like when you, you have red and you're mixing yellow into it to make orange. Uh, that orange, that specific shade of orange that you created that you now like, use that by clicking the Alt key. Or Alt button, whatever. Uh, sure what else to mention here. It's a lot of my pictures now just fleshing it out here. And uh, again, keeping track of my brush strokes and what direction they're in. I'm following the uh, shape of his legs here. Um, this fursona belongs to Majira. I think I said that right. Um, apologize if I didn't. He uh, He's one of the people in this commission. And so that's why the character might look familiar. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of just getting the basic shapes down. I'm not stressing on the finest details. Again, I work it in steps and I don't like to stress or dwell on one area too long, especially with a big picture like this. It's pretty common for me to jump around the picture. Like I'll be working on his pants. I think these are camo. So there's going to be a lot of weird patterns. And right now I'm kind of making sure the, uh, the shadows, the lighting, making it dark as it gets closer to his torso, closer to his body. And anything that's facing the table, you have to kind of help visualize it. Um, but anything that's facing here towards the table is towards the TV, so therefore it gets brighter. And so at a very low opacity, I'll add a brighter shade here. And adding those little bright colors helps me keep track of the light source and what direction it's coming from. I've technically done it with Majira's face and need to add a little bit brighter of a shade. There we go. Well, it's not too bright, but something. Adding that just so that you can see there's obviously a light source here. And technically, at about this point, lines up with the uh, with the shadow on the couch, you see that there's a shadow being cast by the table. And you don't want it to line up directly with the couch because that uh, that's not how 3D shapes work. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me how to start drawings and, and how to sketch and how to do things like in the past. And my biggest thing I still go to is basic shapes, learn basic shapes, and be really comfortable making 3D shapes. Like, I kind of am in the mood to do it, so I'll show you. This isn't wasting too much time because I have to do this table anyway. When you're really good at doing 3D shapes and you're comfortable with it, you can know that if the light's coming from the bottom of the screen, that's the part you're going to illuminate, you're going to make brighter. Meanwhile, the rest, as it goes back, is going to stay darker. And you kind of get comfortable doing that with basic shapes. And as you get better with basic shapes, like just the basic square or a sphere, I should say, and circles and all the basic shapes, the triangles, pyramids, when you make it 3D and you get comfortable with that, it feels like boring exercises. But then you start to notice everything's made of that. A lot of their like le their legs, their arms, their torsos. It's all a bunch of cylinders or rectangles. And 
it just makes everything a little bit easier to visualize. You know how the light, how the light's going to hit. You can figure out a lot of your problems by just simplifying it. And uh, so it's also pretty frequent for me that I jump around a picture. I'll be on one layer and then jump around. I just realized that I was drawing on his pants on the table layer. And so, good, I get to show you how to fix that. I got my selection brush I learned last time. Everywhere I make a stroke is being selected. That is so handy. And only selecting the parts that I shaded in his pants. That sounded weird. And I'm going to have that selected. Right click, layer via cut. It now created a new layer that is only the extra shading. And now I'm just going to move that layer down and put that on this layer. But just in case, I'm going to make sure it's unlocked. The layer was locked before. Merge that down. There we go. And now to double check, I'm like, okay, it's all on the same layer. So now I didn't lose any progress. I've had that mistake so many times. I think it's pretty normal for people who are getting used to all these layers in Photoshop. It's so annoying to keep track of what layer you're on and to make sure you didn't do all this work on the wrong layer. So being able to then use a selection tool and select what you, what you, all your progress but then layer via cut or layer via, if you do layer via cut, that takes everything that was there and rips it out of that current layer into its own layer. Layer via copy means you just selected all that and it made a copy of it, excuse me, but it's still there on the previous one. So that's another way if, if I need to make a bunch of copies of something. Uh, a lot of times people will see if I have like a complicated wallpaper or wrapping paper on a present and it's got a bunch of little patterns or pajama pants or anything like that. And you have a bunch of little patterns that just repeat and it's like, I have to draw all those? No, you can just draw it once. Like see here, this isn't part of it, but I'm gonna do as an example, a little X. That's perfect, that's what I want. Do the selection tool, layer via copy, and now I've got a copy of that X. And now I can rotate it and put it all over the picture that it's needed, in the places it's needed. And just go do 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 do. That's one really handy trick to save you time in Photoshop. I have told you guys once before, but I will be doing a. Uh, I'll be doing work off camera for a while now because one of my friends is visiting for the week, this coming week. So actually tomorrow. And I don't know how much that's going to uh, like give me time to record videos. I'll try to probably do one or two because there are times when, you know, when I, I don't know, like he'll, he'll be watching a video or he'll be doing other stuff. I don't know, whatever, whatever Cody does. <laughs> And I'll have time to just like draw for a bit. And yeah, I, uh, when I think of another topic to bring up, I will do that. But I think I'm actually reaching the end of the video. Um, I'm just continuing to add light sources and fleshing it out. It, it's uh, just a lot of blending, a lot of shading, keeping track of the light source because we want a very illuminated like, wow, Something's causing him to glow. Uh, like with Majira here, you notice on his snout, there, uh, all the shadow seems to be like at the top of his nose because that's how, that's where the light isn't able to hit. It, uh, you kind of see that whenever you go into a mirror and you put a flashlight under your, under your chin and it glows upward, that's kind of the effect I need here. And yeah, if you experiment on just random sheets of paper whenever you're bored or whatever it is, you get used to, oh, okay, that's how I need to, how I need to add the shadows if a light is coming underneath an object or above an object. So it's a lot of practice that you get used to, oh, okay, 
the light comes from over here from behind so everything along these edges like a crescent shape will receive light because they're facing the hallway so there's like a arrow here of what's happening and you know on this side there is no light so it won't receive it and eventually as you can kind of see on Majira here is all and on my character already there's some double lighting where the lights coming from underneath his chin technically it's it's from this angle from the TV but there's also light coming from behind him and those things can get complicated when you've got like triple light sources like someone's holding a flame and there's light behind them and there's a sun in front of them. You've got all these different light angles. Each one has a different amount, but when you do them built up over time, it creates a really 3D shape. So when I can think of another technique to show you guys in how I do this, I will do it. But right now, the video's getting long, so I think that'll be it for now. Leave your comments and questions below because I want to know what to talk about during these. I uh, this, this commission has been a, a big test to figure out what to talk about and how these will run. I might need to plan out and script these a little more than I have been because I want you guys to, uh, well, I want you guys to have a good experience while watching me draw. And yeah, if you guys are curious about anything and you leave a question, that helps me a whole lot because then I can literally make that my next topic in the next video. So I appreciate all of the feedback and comments. I hope you all have had a good start of the year. I will try to make videos as I can. But uh, until then, this is the last, this is uh, the end of the episode. Uh, this is Penmark, and thanks for watching everybody. See you next time. Also a huge shout out to my friend Alex over on Twitter who helped me with my editing program. Looks like now my, sol my uh, problems are over. It's gonna be a lot easier from now on, I should hope. And a uh, huge shout out to him, that really helps. Say hi Lance, video's over, I need to make my bed. He's ignoring me, oh well. Uh, see you guys next time.